It's a brew house and a movie theater. It's already raining. This is cool. This is this is the future. Oh my. We got the menu. Uh, today we have specials on beer. So our beers, we only have two of our six beers, which are going to be right here. They're going to be the Lupulus Arcana and the Flix Golden Ale. Right now, this is $3 a pint instead of five. And then this one is going to be um, $2.75. Two. $2.75? Yeah. And you brew in house? Yep. That's incredible. That's so cool. And then our other beers aren't ready just because we have like a certain standard. If our CEO tries them, doesn't like them, we gotta throw out the whole so balance. Yeah. yeah. The New Mexico law is like they didn't want us to open because they're like, yeah, how are you gonna serve in the dark? So how long? Like, how long have you been open? We actually opened on Friday to the public. Awesome. Thursday we served the heroes of, Albu of Albuquerque, so it was just cops and firefighters. Oh nice. Yeah. It's a brew house that yeah. plays movies. It's kind of sad, but it's kind of exciting. This is the last time the hood will open with the B8, the B20. I did a video two years ago on this engine removal. You guys can see that, I'll put the link in the description, but it's really basic. There's two motor mounts and a couple of small links, heater hoses, throttle linkage. It's very self-explanatory. Um, the biggest issue is probably clearance because there's not a lot of space between the firewall and the radiator support and the radiator. So you're going to either want to separate the transmission and pull it out separately or do them together and come out in an extreme angle and possibly remove this top mount on the radiator support to give you that extra clearance. So the easiest way for us to get that low radiator hose, because they're kind of short and you can't really uh, bend a lot of them, but you would, from the top here, what I did is I, you'd break the seal around that by twisting it and then you would pull from here and twist with your other hand and that kind of helps it free up. Because if you're in the front and you're pushing, or when you're in the bottom and you're pushing, it's just not working very well. Okay, a whopping two hours later, everything's been taken care of, disconnected. Radiator support radiator, all the downpipe. Nothing broke, nothing was bent out of the way, so it just kind of worked really well this time. And the transmission, we disconnected the bolt on the cross member and then dropped the cross member with a, a jack underneath it, so that little jack's gonna keep it from tilting too much to the point where it hits that brake junction on the firewall or the heater hoses too. And now we'll start lifting it up and out. We have the cardboard to protect the valve cover on that side. There's a lot more clearance over here. Uh, bolt goes in the corner of the exhaust manifold. And on the B20, there's an accessory bolt there for the AC, which is really useful today. 
Otherwise, you would have to find a very creative method to get it out. All right, let's start cranking. A common thing I've seen with some of these shifters is the washer here inside fails and then that spring pops out and you have a terrible time shifting. The Amazon I looked at earlier had that same problem. What's your name? That's cool. Oh boy. Now we get to uh, massage it out of the, uh, the tunnel. So there's gonna be a few spots in the back where it binds against the, the shifter tunnel. It shouldn't be more than just a little uh, scrape here and there. And this is... That's sort of the angle it settled at, so not much we could do there. And you always check, make sure it's nice and loose, it doesn't get caught on anything too much. Go ahead and pull it towards you. Let me drop that exhaust a little. Yeah. Right there, it's about as far as we can go before we pull it out. Okay, now we cleared that. And the overdrive only adds like an extra foot, but it's it's small, it's not, it doesn't go up as high, which is nice. Now would be a good time to remove this other mount so it doesn't get in the way too much. Oh man, I love this interior. I love it. Well, I put red block engines in the back of a 242 in the trunk. 240 trunks are big. I don't have room in this trunk, so this is probably the most ambitious engine position I've tried. So the door opens 90 degrees. I don't have that limiter in here which is mostly by accident, but now I'm sort of stuck with it. I like it. And we got plenty of space. So whether or not the accessories stay on or come off, we'll have to, to decide on that. Wow. Cool. Yeah, not bringing in, just to getting it in. Be getting it in? Yeah, we might have to lift up the car a little bit just to match this. Yeah, this is a good decision. I'm, I'm glad we do. Really not much to it. Just the, uh, the easier access with these screws versus the ones that are in the door. And already a bit of rust from a uh, bare metal not getting sealed well. That's not good. Okay, let's do it. Man, this is nuts. We're having fun. Another job well done. Probably the most ambitious, but we did it. We did it! Yeah.